Now, for more on what came out of China's Economic Work Conference, I'm joined by Saurabh Gupta, Senior Asia-Pacific and International Relations Policy Specialist at the Institute for China-America Studies. Welcome for joining us. Thank you. Now, this Central Economic Work Conference is the first since China's 19th Party Congress. How much did that influence what we saw in the communique in terms of fiscal and monetary policy? I think it fundamentally influenced it. In fact, much of what is in the, in the communique borrows from uh, the work report that President Xi Jinping delivered at the 19th Party Congress. And in terms of fiscal and monetary policy, it's very clear that at this point of time, what the government is looking for is resilience and stability on, the, in, on, 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 on that perspective. And especially at a time when there has been a lot of money sloshing around in the economy. And so they want to ensure that there are no debt traps out here and that things can be maintained on an even keel. And when the, were there any other key takeaways for you out of the communique? Well, for me, it, I thought it was very interesting because the communique obviously borrows from that 19th Party Congress. And so it's decisively looking forwards in terms of this new era. But at the same time, while it's looking forward, it's also not ignoring many of the legacy problems that have been inherited. And so it's very important as it talks about in terms of reducing overcapacity and inventory, same things like housing. Uh, it also, at the same time, looking forward in, uh, in terms of restructuring and moving to a more consumption-focused and a more creative China. And it talks, of course, about robotics, artificial intelligence, et cetera. So it's both looking backwards and looking forwards and not ignoring anything. It's, it's very comprehensive. And to that point, let's look at the four R's that are underpinning China's high-quality growth. We have resilience, reduction, restructuring, and as you mentioned, robots. What sort of momentum do you think we can expect on those fronts? Oh, I think they're going to move on all fronts simultaneously. But it is, I think the, the priority will be at initially at least on the resilience front, simply because there's a lot of debt buildup in the economy. And they do not want that to become an issue because that, if that is not successfully managed, all the others might come, a, might, might, might come a cropper. And so I think resilience is the most important. But at the same time, uh, China is moving to this, to this new era and to this new economy. It's going to be a gradual transition. As, as China itself says, over a 30-year period, there's the targets for 2035 and targets for 2050. So it's going to be a gradual process, but it's a process of decisively moving forwards. Now, let's also look at this issue of whether growth targets should be used versus other estimations. What does that mean, then, if the government doesn't go by these growth targets? A criticism of China's growth so far has been that it has been very growth-focused, and it has not talked so much about the quality of growth or the welfare of its citizens to some extent, particularly from the negative repercussions on being single, having the singular focus on growth. So it's important from that perspective. But I would just also say that it's in, growth targets are important. And just because it's not there, this work conference, that doesn't mean that it will not be in the government work report, which feeds, which will be, which this work conference feeds into in March. So I'm, I still think there will be growth targets. And then looking at this focus on high quality growth, what would that look like for China going forward? It will look like focusing on quality, not necessarily just quantity. It would focus on moving up the value chain. It would focus on, 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 on things like making China, a, a, it, as, as I think the, the communicate itself says, created in China rather than made in China, moving from, from that perspective to become not just a producer and manufacturer of goods, but a conceptualizer of goods and design and functionality. And that's, that's, that's very important. And I think China is absolutely perfectly well suited to go up that value, value chain. And how do you think this change is going to affect the local governments and some of the specific industries as they make this transition to higher quality growth? It's, that's an important question because obviously this process has not been easy and it will not be easy, particularly in sectors where there is excess capacity, steel, glass, aluminium. Many of those areas also tend to be somewhat are, are not as dynamic and innovative. And so moving those particular areas from these 
from these sunset industries to some extent and making them more modern will be, a, will be a hard transition. And that's why I think the focus also needs to be in making that transition from a welfare perspective and also focus and tackle on issues like poverty. I think poverty is a very important near-term goal which China wants to escape beyond. And therefore, I think it's a very important that there is this focus on pollution, resilience, and anti-poverty. Certainly a very holistic approach. Thank you so yes. much. Saurabh Gupta there from the Institute for China-America Studies.